Professor Norpeth joins us now from Long Island, New York. He's in his home to explain why he believes the prediction can be believed. So, Professor, I want to thank you for your time and thank you for your insight on this one because I think a lot of people, a lot of heads were turned when you said you have proof that Donald Trump is actually going to be the next U.S. president. Uh, tell us about uh, your prediction here and how you made it. Well, thank you very much for having me and explaining this. Uh, I have looked at uh, presidential primaries for the last 100 years, and I've seen a very striking pattern, and that is that the candidate of the party that uh, does better in the primaries wins against the candidate from the other party that does less well. That's in a very simple way what is happening. You've seen that uh, Donald Trump has won uh, primaries in New Hampshire and South Carolina. That's how, how far I go. He has won a few more since then and that uh, Hillary Clinton and uh, Bernie Sanders split the, the first two primaries in, North, in New Hampshire and uh, South Carolina. So that would make Donald Trump the stronger candidate in these primaries, and that gives him the edge in the general election that's in November. Giving Donald Trump the edge. Does your model allow for any error? Well, certainly, there's, there's, there's error. Uh, as you said already, I've, I missed one election in 1960, uh, in retrospect, at least. I wasn't around to do it in 1960. And uh, the vote percentage that I, I predict for a, a given election uh, usually differs by, I don't know, two to three percentage points. So uh, that's, that's the error that's, 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 uh, that's uh, in the model. Now, yes, in this particular election, Donald Trump is a, a very unique uh, candidate, to say the least. He uh, does things that uh, most people would believe nobody could uh, get away with. And there's a lot of opposition, as uh, has been reported just the last couple of days. Mitt Romney came out very strongly denouncing him. Uh, this is very unusual to, to have this kind of uh, uh, backlash in your own party. So that could be a uh, possibility that uh, it might not be right this time. Well, it's interesting because you read the pundits. For example, the New York Times keeps saying that the eventual candidate for the Republicans won't be Trump despite his success. It's probably going to be Marco Rubio, according to them. Uh, what do you say to, to those people, and especially the Rep Republican establishment? Because you've set up this model, but it seems that Republicans, particularly those in Washington, don't want to accept the way uh, voters in the Republican Party are, are leaning towards. Well, I, I find it very difficult to uh, comprehend what kind of strategy they have in mind to uh, deny Donald Trump the nomination. He is winning primaries. Uh, these primaries decide how many delegates you have, and uh, it is very likely that he will amass enough delegates by the time the primaries are done. So there's no way you can, you can deny him the nomination. This is not the old times when uh, party bosses could get together at the convention and uh, decide on their own ignore primaries. Uh, I think this is uh, this scenario is very difficult. Also, I don't see that uh, these the anti-Trump folks have any candidate in mind that they could rally behind right now and uh, beat Trump. Mm -hmm. and well, and it's interesting because your the news of your, your statistical study comes out around the same time that a poll came out in the United States that said that whether the Democrats elected uh, Clinton or Bernie Sanders, both could actually beat Donald Trump in a general election. What do you make of that poll? Well, uh, th well, that's, that's true. There are quite a few polls that, uh, that show that. Uh, I would say this. Uh, it's very early uh, right now to... Uh, get any idea from these polls about what's happening in November. Uh, p uh, any, anybody who's looked over these polls in past elections will find out that uh, they're not very accurate and that you have to wait uh, at least until, until the conventions, maybe early uh, September, to, uh, to get any idea from polls about uh, who's going to win. I also like to remind any any uh, viewers that uh, Gallup polled the the, uh, the gold standard in uh, in polling actually got it wrong with his last poll in the last election. Gallup picked Romney to win the election, and uh, that was wrong. So I would I would take these polls with a lot of grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. And as you and I speak here very quickly, uh, Professor, since you are a political science professor, how much of what we're seeing in the United States right now, not only with Donald Trump, but with also Bernie Sanders, how much of that is a measure of the dissatisfaction with politics in the U.S. right now? Well, I think it's very profound. I, I think it's uh, uh, highly unusual that you have uh, these kind of insurgent candidates in both parties. And uh, I, I don't, I, I can't recall any, anyone, and, and 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 so intense and 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 so furious uh, uh, polls that show that uh, 
like 90 percent of Republican voters say they're angry or, or dissatisfied. I think this is, uh, uh, this, is, this is very unique. Unique and something to watch out for. Professor Norpa, thank you very much for your time.